Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So we get this question a lot that when people are TIG welding on aluminum, they're getting like little black floaties or you know peppering at the end of their welds. And what that is, is contamination. So people oftentimes they think that they've cleaned the material enough that they're not gonna get contamination, they don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna go through some of the common cleaning processes that a lot of people do. Uh, we're gonna wipe everything down with acetone. We're just gonna try a couple different cleaning methods. Uh, do a couple little welds on there, show you the results, and then we're gonna do one side, how you should properly clean it, and it's a lot simpler than you would think, and show you the results with that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, the first thing we wanna do, obviously, is clean off uh, with the acetone. So we wanna wipe everything down, the parts that we're gonna be welding. Uh, we wanna try to get rid of any excess oils or surface contaminants we have on here. Obviously, you don't wanna weld over paint, so you wanna make sure you take any of that off, but once we're down to bare metal, just give it a quick wipe down with some acetone just to get all the uh, oils from the manufacturing process or the shop environment that might be on there. So we're at the first point that most people complete and that's wiping it down with acetone. At that point, they think they're ready to go. They can weld. Obviously, I can see it, you can see it. This isn't the ideal surface to be welding on. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave all the contaminants that we have on there left over after the acetone. We're gonna weld on that and see how it performs. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna to attempt to do some different cleaning procedures and see what the type of results that we get with that. Now, as most of you know, acetone is a highly flammable product and we're gonna be dealing with extreme heat here in a moment. So what I wanna make sure that I do is, once I'm done with the acetone, once everything's cleaned up where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the flammable items from my work area. So I'm gonna go put this up, I'm gonna get back with some welding gloves, we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that first weld. So as you can probably tell when I was welding, I've got some nice little floaters in there. And I'm not quite sure, depending on the angle you got here, you should be able to see some of that peppering that I have on the piece here. And that's because it's pulling up all the little contaminants or oxides and pulling it up into that weld. And what they do is they end up rise to the surface and they hang out right there on the weld once it's solidified. What that is is the contaminants, okay? So aluminum naturally has what's called aluminum oxide on the surface. Now, aluminum oxide melts at around 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. Pure aluminum, though, melts at around 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. So you'll probably notice that when you're just learning how to weld aluminum, you know, you're hanging out, you're waiting for that puddle to establish, and all of a sudden you just blow a hole in your material. That's because by the time you hit the temperature to melt that aluminum oxide, the aluminum underneath the oxide has already melted 2,400 degrees ago. So that's why you want to take the time to clean that up. Now, even though aluminum oxide is very hard, almost equivalent to a diamond. I think it's the second hardest element known to man. You can clean it up very simply with a stainless steel wire brush. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean off another area with a stainless steel wire brush, but I'm gonna clean it off in such a way that most people clean the material off and they think it's good enough for what we have to do. So the material's gonna look nice and clean. However, it's gonna be deceiving. Once we get to the back side of this, I'll show you how to clean it out properly, but I just wanna highlight a common mistake uh, people say that, you know, I've cleaned it off with acetone, I've hit it with the wire brush, and I'm still getting contaminants. What's the deal? So I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how most people clean this up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clean this up improperly with a stainless steel wire brush. Most people get up in there and they start cleaning and everything, but what I'm actually doing as I'm raking back and forth between this material is as I'm pulling these oxide layers off one way, I'm jamming them back into the material the other way. So I still have aluminum oxide going into this area. And here's that oxide that I was telling you about. See all that stuff right there? That's that black peppery stuff that's ended up in your weld as you're welding and then solidifying on the top once you're done. So what you can see is this is all that aluminum oxide and surface contaminants that I'm pulling off of there. Okay, you'll actually be able to physically see this stuff. But if you're using the wire brush incorrectly, you're pulling it one way and then cramming it back into the base metal the other. And then once I go to weld on it, it's just going to get pulled to the surface once again. You'll see it in the weld as you're welding across it, and then you'll see it in the final product. Okay, so once again, I know if I saw it in the puddle, you guys definitely saw it in the puddle. That lens picks up stuff that you can't even see when you're under the hood. So you've seen that debris floating back up to the surface. Once again, that's the aluminum oxides, the surface, surface contaminants. And again, I have small little black peppery areas in here. It's, again, it's due to improper cleaning. Although I hit it with the wire or the acetone, cleaned it up with a stainless steel wire brush, I didn't clean it up correctly. Okay, that's gonna be a big consideration in it. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna move into the mentality that most people have. 
Okay, I gotta go bigger, faster, better, stronger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a wire wheel to clean that up and show you that that's even worse to do if you have a lot of aluminum, aluminum cleanup to do. That's because when I use a wire wheel, whether it's stainless steel or carbon, if you're gonna do it at all, definitely use a stainless steel wheel. But regardless of the one that you use, what you're gonna do is you're gonna superheat the aluminum material and you're gonna drive that oxide layer even deeper into the base metal. Once you weld over top of it, again, those surface contaminants that are gonna break free from underneath the surface and they're gonna pull up to the top of the weld. That's another thing you wanna avoid. So let's go ahead, clean this up, and um, let's we'll see how that does. Okay, so you can kind of see how the surface is raised in here. What they call that is like a raspberry effect. You got little bumps and dimples all along there, and those that's where the contaminations ended up in those little pockets or those bumps. Now, with this demonstration, we're using a regular steel wire wheel, which is going to compound that. It's going to add additional contaminants into the weld metal, and that's what a lot of people do because that's what they have at their disposal. It's what they got in the gang box. They've got carbon wire wheels because that's what the company bought, right? They're trying to save some money. So we just want to show you exactly what's going to happen. Let's see how it welds with the wire wheel. Okay, so again, you can see that one welded like pretty nasty. Uh, a lot of surface contaminants coming up and the weld just looks like crap on the, uh, the exterior, the surface of it. I highly recommend that you don't do it that way. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over to the back side and I'll show you exactly how I would do it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna clean up the first 50% of this uh, plate just using a handheld stainless steel wire brush, but this time we're gonna do it the right way. I'm gonna brush this only one direction pull everything off, make sure all the debris is pulled off to the side, and make sure I don't go back and forth so I'm not cramming uh, oxides back into the, uh, the striations of the material. Now it's not gonna matter if I push or pull, I just don't wanna do both. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna start from the left-hand side and work my way to the right. I'm gonna clean the surrounding area too because heat's gonna wanna pull that stuff in. So I wanna make sure those edges are all nice and clean. A little bit up on the sidewall. I like to clean about a half inch, three eighths to a half inch away from where I'm actually gonna be welding at. That way that arc doesn't pull anything into my puddle that I don't want in there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run this. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner than anything we've done previously aside from that wire wheel, but we all seen how the results turned out on that. So take your time, a little bit of elbow grease goes a long way on this stuff. All right, so that one turned out pretty good. You guys can see that flowed a lot better. I had less contaminants in there. You're not gonna alleviate all of them. Uh, that's my preferred method of cleaning, but I mean, who the hell am I? I'm sitting here, I'm welding out three inch coupons, four inch coupons all day. So I know some of you guys that are out in the field, you have longer sections to clean, and you don't want to spend all day messing around with one of these. So what I would recommend is a stainless steel brush on a variable speed grinder. Thanks, man cub. So we're gonna go ahead and run this one. This is a stainless steel wheel. You can tell because the arbor casing that I have here, it's black, uh, regular carbon steel. Those are gonna be, it's gonna have a stainless steel or a shiny color to it. I'm gonna go ahead and run this at about 5,400 RPMs. I'm still running one direction, so I'm not gonna incur all that heat that would allow all the oxides to kind of fold back in, kind of subsurface on the base material. Let's go ahead and clean it up with this. We'll run one more weld and see how this does compared to uh, old school you know, elbow grease, cleaning it off by hand. Let's get to it. Okay, so as you can see, that one uh, came out really nice. It flowed really well. Didn't have a lot of the pepper, the, the flaking that you know you typically have with a lot of the uh, aluminum applications. Like I've said in previous episodes, your base metal can't be too clean. It can be too dirty very easily, but you, you, it can't be too clean. I've always said it, 80% of your, wel your welding is gonna be prep and clean up. The other 20% is actually gonna be the technical part, which is the welding. You're gonna spend a lot of time cleaning and prepping to get those good welds. Um, so you'll notice with that wire wheel with the variable speed grinder, it made life a lot easier, it was a lot faster. So if you have longer joints, longer weldments, that's what I would recommend versus a handheld wire brush. However, if you're practicing, you're just starting out, handheld wire brush is gonna be the best application. One direction only with it. You know, clean that stuff off, get, that, you know, get those oxides off the material. Don't dig back and forth in there. Um, you know, couple that with a little bit of acetone you know, before you do all this stuff and then maybe squirt another shot in there and wipe it down right before you get into welding you know, you're gonna be good. As always, you're gonna to wanna to clean your filler metal before you go in there. 
I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, you're just wasting too much time. Depending on what you're welding on, you're going to want to clean your filler metal. I understand for most cases, repair work, certain fabrication, you're not going to waste your time doing it. But if you clean up your filler metal, your results are going to be a lot better anyway because you have to think about it. This piece is aluminum. Aluminum oxide is naturally going to form on your filler metal as well as the base metal that you're working on. All right, hopefully you found the video educational and informative. I want to go ahead and take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Isotunes. They're actually approved by NIOSH and OSHA to be used as hearing protection. I've been jamming out to them all day, kind of drowning out, drowning out the, uh, the AC and the, the grinders and stuff because I don't have to listen to my music at such a loud volume to drown out the sound of that. So if you guys are interested in those, go ahead and click the link down in the description. Cameraman's going to put in there for you. Until next time, make your world better than your last.